In from the cold, from my broken road, you welcomed me in and you made me your own. The heat of your fire it melted my soul. All of this time, this is where I belong. Oh, I am found. Oh, so I sing it out.
And good morning and welcome to church if you are here live this morning. If not, hello and welcome nevertheless. It's excellent to have you tuning in to C3 Reflect today. And I hope that you're having a wonderful day um, and have been enjoying the service so far. If you haven't already, why don't you pop something on the chat? Tell us something funny that's happened to you in the last week. Uh, we'd absolutely love to hear about it because we all need to laugh, don't we? Uh, but it is awesome to be together today. And we really believe that connection is so important. And that when, when we connect to each other, when we start to build community and relationships, that's like builds our life so much and things start happening and um, connections start being made. And it's very exciting and good. So that is why we're so passionate 
passionate about being a family, being a community in the middle of London. Um, and so if this is your first time today or one of your first time or you haven't quite reached out yet, we would absolutely love you to head to our website, c3reflect.church forward slash connect and uh, just fill in a quick form, get in touch so we can find out some more about you. Uh, we'd love to have a chat. We'd love to find out what's going on in your life and how we can kind of grow together, move together um, and be the body of Christ, be the community and family that God has called us to be. But we are in for an amazing service today. Um, so make sure you've got your notebooks, you've got your cup of tea, cup of coffee, cup of turmeric latte, whatever, whatever you like and uh, enjoy. <laughs> church let's just take a moment to open our hearts as I pray Father Lord we thank you thank you that you are good God we thank you 
that we have a good, good father. And Lord, as we go into a time of worship, Lord, we just welcome your Holy Spirit. We fix our eyes on Jesus. And Lord, we pray, Lord, that you help us to worship you in spirit and in truth today. That Lord, you will speak to each and every single one of us today, Lord. We pray that you'll have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Well, hello and welcome to church today. So great to be with you. My name is Sats and my wife, Em and I, we are the lead pastors here at C3 Reflect. So cool to be with you and uh, thanks for letting us get crashed into your space, your house, your flat, uh, your parents' uh, place. I don't know where you are right now, whether you're watching live, put something in the chat or you are catching up on YouTube later. That's also awesome. Drop us a comment. We always love just to hear who's tuning in and who we're getting to interview interact with. And uh, kind of cool because we're uh, coming to the close of our latest series, um, which has been called Sin Tings. I think it's about three weeks or so, so far. So you can go catch up on that if you want to delve into the backlog. And uh, gosh, we've been just throwing up this whole conversation around, well, a whole heap of things, really. We started off talking about just the brokenness in our world. And that when we truly understand that we're not just uh, uh, broken pieces, but we're actually some of the people doing part, some of the breaking as well, that we can really uh, find God's grace and God's love meets us in that contrast of the gospel. We talked about how God is creating a new heaven and a new earth and the need to create a separation that is actually a loving God that allows hell to exist, that it wouldn't creep into heaven and the newness and the beautiful new life that God has for us wouldn't be destroyed by the old. And last week we talked all about suffering and uh, we talked about how the great this blessing is actually who we're becoming. That God looks at the brokenness of our world and he's like, let's do something with this. And he uses it for our goodness. So it has been an absolute journey. It's been a whirlwind. It's been fun. It's been awesome. And uh, today, if you are taking notes and you want to write down the title of today's message, you can write down this. It's called Power Play. Power Play. And I really just wanted to spend a few moments um, just kind of looking at what we do now. Like we've learned all this stuff, we've got this new understanding of just this greater contrast in our world. We've we've grounded our theology, Um, but but what do we do now? Where do we go from here? What does it look like? How do we change the world? We're aware of the brokenness of our world. What do we do now? And I just wanted to bring as a message that is gonna really position us to really get this in our future. And um, well, a a little while ago, I, I was, um, I was, a driving for the first time after my test. I don't know if you remember that experience where you're driving and it's literally like, wow, this is real life driving. And uh, I say a little while ago, it's, it's maybe a bit more of a while ago now. We were living in Germany at the time. I'd passed my test in the UK and uh, my first driving experience was in Germany. And I think I think this is the first time we, we hired a smart car and we went on a holiday to France. And uh, we're going on the German Autobahn. And you know, if you've ever driven a small car, you'll know that when you're going at high speeds, that thing is like, you you can feel the wind pressure and you just get to keep that thing going super straight. And uh, we're in this tiny little two-seater with all of our stuff packed in there. And man, this thing is so flimsy, so light. We are like, as a first driving experience, it was pretty intense. And I remember going for this moment where, where I, I needed to change lanes and just thinking, I've not really done this before at high speed, and just not really knowing how much to turn, how much this thing's gonna affect. And so uh, the first few kind of lane changes were a little bit harrowing, and it was like it was like a big event. It was like turning a plane around. And, uh, and after a little bit, Em kind of looked over at me because she'd been driving a bit longer, and she said, Sats, don't, don't focus on just moving to the next lane. Um, because I was just kind of looking, trying to move from left to right, from right to left. She said, focus focus on the space ahead of you that you're trying to get into and then just gently steer into it. And and it was amazing. The results were so different. I stopped concentrating on trying to get to where I needed to be and I started to look at the bigger picture of, of, of where we're going. And I began to lift my eyes and look ahead and the results were greatly diff- different. I don't know if you've ever uh, uh, played or learned a musical instrument. Well, one of the things that, that you will end up getting to do is using a metronome. And a metronome is that, that annoying clicking sound that, that, that you've got to keep time to. And it's really funny when, when you hear people trying to play in time where they're always trying to catch the next beat. And it's like they're always just slightly behind because they're trying to get to the beat. They're zoning in on something that is so focused that they're missing the, the, the full groove, the full rhythm. And, and when you pull back and begin to take into account the, the whole beat, you begin to find that there's an ability to come into sync with the metronome. Now here's, here's, here's where I'm going with this because 
I realize that we can get so consumed by all of the things happening in our world. Like there's so many things we can be looking at, like and thinking about and on our mind at any one given time that we can very easily find our focus being all over the place. We're thinking about work, we're thinking about our next job, we're thinking about the future, we're thinking about relationships, we're thinking about our parents, uh, we, we're thinking about so many things. We're thinking about having a social life, you know, hello, 2021, we want to go outside. We're, we're thinking about all these things on our mind. But I, I realize that when you get the big things right, the small details fall into place. And that's really what this message is about. Because I think there is just, there is just one thing that I think we need to give our focus. And if we get this thing right, we're going to find that all of the small details in our life are going to flow into place. You know, if we want to be a part of truly changing the world, if we want to be a part of healing a broken world, we need to learn how to do this one thing. And this is, this is what Jesus says in John 15, verse 4 to 8. He says, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Since I'm the vine and you're the branches, whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit, sounds good, for apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples." You see, church, if there is just one thing we could take away from this whole series, if there's just one thing we could, we could allow to have our focus as we move forward from this day, it is simply this, that we would learn to abide in Christ. That we would learn to slow down and to give Jesus our focus. To live a life, a rhythm of life out of deep communion with Him. If we give our focus to Jesus, we're going to find that the fruit will follow. He says that when you learn to abide, when you learn to live, to slow down, to be in communion with Him, that there is going to be much fruit. See, we can live our life chasing after things and those things can be good. And we can be thinking about ways we're going to move the world forward. But you know what I've realized? If we get this one thing wrong, we're going to find that we're just going to be a part of the problem and we're going to add more hurt and more pain and more sorrow into our world. Everything we do has to flow out of a, a relationship with God that is intimate, that is slow, that is genuine, that is real. Abide in me. How's, I just wonder how your relationship with God is right now. I wonder what abiding looks like for you right now. Because where your focus is, is where your fruit will come from. Your fruit will come from your focus. When we focus on Christ, we're going to find that the fruit of our life is going to be good. This is, this is what the Bible says about the fruit of Christ, the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5, verse 22 to 23. Fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And it says, against such things, there is no law. In other words, when you live a deep and intimate relationship with Jesus, where you learn to be with Him and slow down to be in communion with Him, the fruit of your life is unstoppable. Just like a tree doesn't have to try to bear fruit. It's, it's natural. It comes Easily, it's part of the nature of a tree. So you and I, when we are in relationship with Jesus, we ought to expect that the fruit of God is going to follow in our lives. And here's what you need to understand, church, because we might think, well, that sounds nice, kindness and gentleness. How's that going to change the world? Well, no, think about this. The, it was the love of God that brought Jesus to the cross. It was the love of God that overcame death. There is power in the things of, of God's kingdom that are beyond our understanding. And the promise from God is that as we slow down to be in relationship with Jesus, God 
God will actually use us to change the world, to heal a broken world. How can we change the world? How can we deal with the problems in society, in our nation, in our families, in our communities? We learn to be with Jesus. It's by faith. We walk by faith. We walk with Christ by faith, knowing that His purpose and His plan is going to flow through our lives because what you focus on will determine the fruit of your life. Now, our world has mixed this up a little bit because our world has made some things that are good the focus instead of the fruit. We've made love the focus instead of the fruit. If we can just have more love, if we could just, we just have more peace, we just have more joy. And what we can find is when joy becomes our focus, we live a life that is shallow. We live a life that is just purely about fun. We live a life that is just about being happy and we miss out on a whole bunch of other parts of life. When, when life is just about peace, when peace is our only focus, we are going to avoid uh, any uncomfortable situation that comes our way. We're going to retreat into a cocoon of fear and smallness. But no, God says, no, put your focus on Jesus. Let me be in the center of your life and watch and see as the fruit of the Spirit will be brought about in your world. See, when we bring our focus on Jesus, when we lift our eyes, we're going to find that things are going to work much better. And I want us to be a church that is about Jesus Christ. I want us to be a church that is not distracted by the social issues of our day, by the politics of our day, by the dramas of our day, by the the meaningless, uh, just complaints and arguments and just confusion of today. I want us to be a church that has our focus on Jesus Christ because I know that when we give our full attention and our worship and we live in relationship with Him, we're going to see change in our world. We're going to see the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Jesus Christ coming into our world. You see, the disciples kind of had this situation where they had some degree of relationship with Jesus. They'd been hanging out for a few years and they felt like they knew him. And Jesus was trying to explain to them this, this, obviously he was going to die, but not only that, that he was going to send the Holy Spirit. That there was going to be this whole new sense of experience of life. And here's here's what, what it says in John 16, verse 17 to 24. So some of his disciples said to one another, what is that he says to us, a little while and you will not see me. And again, a little while and you will see me. They're confused. And because I'm going to the Father. And so they were saying, what does this mean? We do not know what he's talking about. And Jesus knew what they wanted to ask him. So he, he said to them, is this what you're asking yourselves? What I meant by saying a little while and you will not see me. And again, a little while and you will see me. Truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will re- rejoice. You'll be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she's delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. So also you have sorrow now, but I will see you again. And your heart will rejoice and no one will take that joy from you. There's that reference to that, that there's no law against this thing. In that day, you will ask nothing of me. Truly, truly, I say to you, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, He will give it to you. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive so that your joy may be full. See, see, the disciples were, were trying to keep track of, of their relationship with Jesus. They said, Jesus, we don't understand. You, you say you're going to go away and, and how's this going to work? But Jesus was making them a promise that the Holy Spirit was going to come and that, that they wouldn't need to ask him like they would ask him in person, but that wherever they went across the earth, that the Spirit of Jesus Christ would be with them so that they could abide so that they could be close and intimate and personal and they could experience Jesus in their world. You see, Jesus was using this analogy of a new birth a new way of living. He's talking about the Holy Spirit and he's saying that, hey, when the Holy Spirit comes, you're gonna have access to a whole new life, a whole new intimacy, a whole new way of thinking that that as you fix your eyes on me, there's gonna be a flow through your life through the Holy Spirit. 
Hey church, I don't know how well you know Jesus today. I don't know how intimate you would say your relationship with God is right now, but can I just encourage you and invite you right now into a whole new layer of relationship with Jesus through the Holy Spirit. If we can put Jesus front and center as a sole and primary focus in this next season, we're gonna see that the fruit of Christ is gonna follow through our world. And we're gonna, we're gonna see the power of God rock up in our world. We're going to see people get healed. We're going to see just people who have been uh, bound up in chains and their minds and their emotions and their past are going to be set free by the power of the Holy Spirit. We're going to see people get saved and come to Christ. We're going to see the church grow. We're going to see influence in our world. We're going to see the light of Jesus increase in Great Britain. I'm believing for it. Why? Because I know that when the church begins to get a hold of Jesus and begins to stir a hunger on the inside of them, the fruit of God is going to follow. So how do we keep our focus on Jesus without it being just kind of like a really, you know, yeah, let's just follow Jesus kind of thing. Like, well, how do we actually do that? Well, let me share just three quick thoughts for us today on, on how we do that. Well, the first one is simply this, is that we've got to have a genuine hunger. A genuine hunger. I love that picture of the vine and the branches, that Jesus is the vine. We're the branches. And, you know, it's kind of obvious. We're connected. And Jesus actually says, you can do nothing apart from me, which is kind of a crazy thought. Like, well, you know, wow, I'm going to brush my teeth. Like, no, he's not really talking about that sort of nothing. What he's trying to say is that, that when it comes to spiritual fruit, when it comes to having value, uh, not in your worth in yourself, but in terms of moving the mission forward in the kingdom of God, producing something in the world. He's saying, without me, you, you simply can't do that. You gotta be connected to me. And, and the vine and the branch, the branches is, is drawing strength and nutrients and everything it needs to flourish. And the vine is, it's not that the vine is holding anything back. The vine wants to see the branch prosper. The branch has to lean in. And so we, we've got to have a genuine desire, a genuine just raw hunger to, to have Jesus in our world. And some of that is just, it is what it is. You either have it or you don't. But, but the other thing I'd just say is, is that, did you know that your taste buds actually change quite regularly? And over time, if, if we have a, a diet that is rich and salt and uh, just, you know, a little bit, you know, uh, maybe more sugar and, and whatever, um, we're, we're going to find that we become a little bit desensitized to more normal or more plain, healthy, generally speaking, food. And, and we can, you know, you bite into a salad, and it's just like, ah, oh, it's just missing something. It's because actually our taste buds have changed. And I realized for us, one of the things we've got to do to keep our hunger in check is to Keep a good sense of audit in our lives of how we're doing. To practice self-awareness. This is what the psalmist says in Psalm 139, verse 23 to 24. It says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any grievous way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. You know, because it's hard for us to see in a world. And so we've, we've got to ask ourselves, we've got to say, wow, how am I doing? Am I, am I more motivated by success or am I motivated by Jesus? I, I, do I get my source? Do I draw my strength and my nutrients from my popularity? Or do I draw it from my relationship with Jesus. How, how excited are you about sharing Jesus with your world? You can ask yourself questions. If Jesus asked me to give up something, how, how would I feel about that? What, what, what's the limit of where I'd be prepared to go? Because why we need to make sure we've got a genuine hunger and we've got to keep ourselves holy before God. And so, so that we, we would really genuinely lean in because when our focus is on Christ, we're going to find that the fruit of Christ is going to follow in our world. And when the fruit of Christ comes into our world, we're going to actually begin to change our world. We need to have a genuine hunger. And the second thing is simply this, is we've got to have regular intimacy. Regular intimacy. The, the, branch, the branch isn't sometimes connected to the vine. It's permanently connected to the vine. It can't decide, oh, I just, I don't know if I want to be uh, here. It's, it's like if you're married, like my wife, Adam, we, we, we love talking. Like we just actually like talking to one another. And so, you know, but I've, I've met 
I've met some couples in the past and, and no, no judgment here, but, but like who, who like permanently live opposite sides of the country. I'm just like, I understand because being married for me is about having a regular connection, intimacy, conversation, enjoyment, like being able to share and all of that stuff. We might be technically married, but if we don't enjoy that, we're not enjoying the, 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 the richness of what marriage is. And so for you and I today, when it comes to our relationship with God, we might be Christians, but do we, do we have a regular intimacy with Jesus? Jesus, I just see Jesus right now and he is so yearning for your company. I just see someone right now and you felt like God must want nothing to do with you. Why would God want to spend time? Can I just encourage you and let you know right now that Jesus wants to be in your world. He wants to be in relationship with you. And no matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, no matter what you've said, no matter the mistakes you've made, can I just let you know right now that there is an intimate relationship with God ready for you? How do, you, how do we develop and maintain a relationship? How do we start new relationships? It's just time. It's about regularity. Wherever you're at right now, can I encourage you? Let's create a regular, intimate relationship with Jesus. How would you, how would you rate it? How would you rate your regularity? Are we like a once in a month Christian? And no judgment. I'm just saying, look, that, that, that your focus will determine your fruit. And the fruit of your life is your impact on this world. And if we genuinely care about the people in our world, if we genuinely wanna see the things of God, come on, let's prioritize an intimate, real relationship with Jesus Christ. And the third thing we need to have if we're gonna keep Christ in the center is simply this, is great expectations. We need to have great expectations. You know, I love that, that, that idea that the branch is the vine and the vine is the branch. So it's like when the branch wants to do something, it's, it's not doing its own thing. It's not starting another thing over here. It's, it's connected. The vision and the mission and the purpose is so entwined together. It's, it's like, so Jesus says, ask whatever you wish. In other words, when, when you're coming from a, 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 an intimate, genuine relationship with God, and you understand the way he thinks, you know what he wants to do. Jesus is like, ask whatever you wish. Ask whatever you want because it will be done. You know, my wife can ask me for anything. She can say, Sats, can you do this? And even if I don't want to do it, I'll probably do it. <laughs> and that's in our imperfect human relationship. How much more will God open every door? And we can, we can spend so much of our energy and our focus striving, trying to open things up, trying to move our career forward, trying to open up this door. And yet what we find is that when we bring Jesus into our as our sole primary focus, we're going to find that the things that God is able to open God can open up so quickly with the power of the Holy Spirit. When we stop striving, we find that we tap into power. This is what Joel 2 verse 28 to 29 says. It says, it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. Even on the male and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit. You know, I'm believing church that as we come through this season with a renewed relationship with God, with a renewed focus, with a new sense of consecration and purpose, I'm believing that we're gonna see the greatest move of God that we've ever seen in our secular post-Christian nation. That we're gonna see people get saved, we're gonna see real God dreams. And I'm believing for you right now on the dreams in your heart, the stuff that is untapped, the potential on the inside of you. Can I just let you know right now that everything on the inside of you is gonna be unlocked when you understand that Jesus is to be our sole focus. And when we put Jesus in the center, all the fruit of the goodness of God and the blessing of God and the fun of dreams and the mission and the purpose is unlocked 
by the power of the Holy Spirit. So the Spirit comes upon you. And I'm just believing right now, there's people right now, and you're not sure if, if you, you've been living in this intimate relationship. You don't know if you know the Holy Spirit. And I'm just believing right now for a touch from God, for the Holy Spirit to fill you right now. I'm believing for holy dreams to rise. Some of you, there's been like a, a blank over your future, just thinking, I, I don't know what's to come. I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know where I'm going, but I'm believing right now, the Holy Spirit, we're gonna get clarity right now. So wherever you are, let me pray for you right now. Let's just open our hearts and let's just say just together right now, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Come and fill me afresh. It's a powerful prayer. You can pray right now. And God, I thank you so much for every person tuning in right now. God, I thank you for just this, this refocusing. This is a day of consecration. This is a day of coming back to you. This is a day of laying down idols. This is a day to, to give you our focus. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would fill every person with your spirit right now. God, give them a fresh touch, a fresh anointing. God, let, let your fire fall upon people's hearts, God, and minds. Let there be a purification, God, in people's souls right now. God, we pray, lift them. Lift them by the power of your Spirit. And re we release the dreams of the future, the dreams in their heart. God, we say, we, we say God, you said, ask whatever you, you wish and it will be done. God, we pray for the release of dreams. God, the release of dreams. God, those dreams on the inside of people. Let this be a day where dreams are released in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Touch every person. Come on, let's just take 30 seconds. Just begin to lean in wherever you are. Holy Spirit, touch every person. Touch every person. God, fill their lives with the fruit of following Christ. Fill their lives with peace. Fill their lives with joy. Fill them, Holy Spirit, we pray, with a great sense of self-control. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hey, there's just one last thing I wanna do really quickly, and that's give uh, somebody or maybe a whole bunch of people the opportunity to follow Jesus. Maybe for the first time, maybe this is a rededication to say, hey, I'm making the decision, I've been away from God, but I know I need to get my life right. I've not been living an intimate relationship. Well, hey, let's pray a prayer together. Let's get you sorted right now as we just bring ourselves back to God. Let's pray this together. You can repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I want to say sorry for going my own way, doing my own thing. And I receive right now your forgiveness, your acceptance, your love. Would you be my Savior, my Lord, my King? Holy Spirit, fill me right now, I pray. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, that's just the most amazing prayer. We're so thrilled for you right now. And um, we would love to be just journeying with you and together. That's what the church is. It's a group of people imperfectly following Jesus, trying to keep Him as the, the main event, the main thing. And uh, we're just so believing for you, believing for your very best. We'd love to hear from you. Let us know if you've prayed that prayer or if you'd like um, just further prayer, uh, anything we can do to help you and support you. And this time, head to our website, c3reflect.church slash Jesus, and you can just let us know about that there. Well, gosh, guys, this has been so good. Thank you so much for joining us today and God bless you and we'll see you soon.
I'm not striving in my own strength I'm striving in yours I'm not trying to find my own way I'm walking that course Not thinking about my own plans I'm thinking about yours With you my steps are safe You motion me for Yeah, and now I'm Your love will still embrace me 
I know that I can make it I can make it You're with me when I walk through fire Even when I face the giant In the darkness with the light Tell the devil that he's a light And even when I'm in the waiting In all of my broken places Can be faithful, I am faithful And I will not be afraid I'll be afraid 